In this lecture, we are going to learn how to deploy a website to Firebase. Join me in your terminal or command line and make sure you're inside of your project folder. Then we're going to use the command Firebase deploy and hit enter. Then you can wait a moment and this is going to deploy your website from your project folder and it's going to deploy it to your actions on Google. So you'll get the message deploying database functions and hosting and it's going to run the pre-deploy script, check the rules syntax, ensure the API cloud functions.google APIs is enabled and you will get a message that you must be on the blaze pay to go plan to complete this command pay as you go plan because there's one required API that we're using cloud build.googleapis.com which can't be enabled unless your project is on the blaze plan so even if your account seems to be on the blaze plan you have to make sure your project also is so you can visit the following URL that it prompts for you and you can upgrade your project to the blaze plan so here I am at that URL prompted for me. This takes me to console.firebase.google.com. This is the Firebase console and I'm at the usage and billing tab and details and settings. By default, every new project created on Firebase uses the Spark plan, which is the free billing plan. We have to modify the plan to use the Blaze plan, pay as you go, which includes free usage calculated daily, pay only for what your project uses if you go past the allotted free usage. So you can click on see full plan details. Okay, so here you can see you have no cost for A-B testing, analytics, app distribution, and app indexing. For authentication here, if you want to do phone authentication, it does cost a penny per verification for US, Canada, and India, but for all other countries, it costs six cents per verification. For Cloud Firestore, the Blaze plan is no cost up to one gigabyte total. For Network Egress, there's no cost up to 10 gigabytes per month. For document rights, there's no cost up to 20,000 writes per day. For document reads, there's no cost up to 50,000 reads per day. For document deletes, there's no cost up to 20,000 deletes per day. For cloud functions, which our project is using, you see, you can't use the Spark plan at all for cloud functions, but you can use it with the Blaze plan. So for invocations of cloud functions, so calling cloud functions, there's no cost up to 2 million per month. So odds are you won't go past this, especially as you're learning. For gigabytes per second, there's no cost up to 400,000 per month. For CPU seconds, there's no cost up to 200,000 per month. For outbound networking, there's no cost up to 5 gigabytes per month. For cloud build minutes, there's no cost up to two hours a day. For container storage, the usage has costs. You're going to be spending about three cents per gigabyte for container storage. Pricing can vary based on location, but these are typical pricing that you'll see. Cloud messaging is free. Crash lytics is free. Dynamic links are free. For hosting, Storage is about three cents per gigabyte. Data transfer is about 10 cents or 15 cents per gigabyte. Custom domains and SSL are free. Multiple sites per project are free. For in-app messaging, there is no cost. For Firebase machine learning, there is free custom model deployment. And for Cloud Vision APIs, it is $1.50 per kilobyte. There is free performance monitoring and free predictions. There is also the real-time database, which for simultaneous connections costs 
or allows for 200,000 connections per database. For gigabytes stored, it is $5 per gigabyte, and for gigabytes downloaded, it is $1 per gigabyte. You can have multiple databases in your project. Remote configuration is free. Cloud storage allows for gigabytes stored and downloaded, upload and download operations, and multiple buckets per project. For the test lab, you can do virtual device tests and physical device tests up to a limit per day. There's also the Google Cloud, which has BigQuery, the BigQuery Sandbox, and other IAAS. Firebase is deeply integrated with Google Cloud, allowing you to use Google's infrastructure as a service directly with your Firebase project. So if you want to use cloud functions, we need to implement the Blaze plan to allow for those cloud functions. But odds are you won't be having any cost associated because you will be using it so little so you won't reach the limits. So we want to upgrade to the Blaze plan by selecting that plan. You can also set a billing budget to send an email to all administrators on the billing account when the cost for the project approaches or exceeds this amount. So you'll get an email at, in this case, 50 cents, 90 cents, and a dollar, and can customize this later. You can also skip this step. Then you can continue and you'll get the message you'll now be charged based on your usage of database storage, hosting, machine learning, test lab functions, and cloud services. And you can always delete the project at any time or remove the plan. Then you can purchase. So now my project is on the Blaze plan. So it is per project. All right, so you can see here in my details and settings, I'm now at a billing account and I have budgets and alerts and I have my Firebase billing plan. So now I can go to my terminal and I can use the up arrow key to run my command again, Firebase deploy. So this time the deployment will be successful because I now have cloud functions enabled because in order to enable cloud functions, I had to have the Blaze plan associated with this project specifically, the project being my actions project. After cloudbuild.googleapis.com and cloudfunctions.googleapis.com are enabled, the command line interface is going to then prepare the functions directory for uploading, and then it will upload that functions folder. Then it will begin deployment and it will take all of the files in public and it's going to upload those files. In this case, we just have one file. Then we're going to release the database rules for the database, which was created for this project specifically. So there's actually this database name created for my actions project. Then we're going to create a Node.js 16 function, hello world, at the US central database. So this function, hello world, that corresponds directly with my index.js file. I have exports.hello world created. This was some default code included with the project. We're using functions, which are Firebase functions.https.onRequest. So when there is a request, we're going to call functions.logger and log out hello logs. And the response will be hello from Firebase. So that was just a simple function that we had. And currently the command line interface is creating that function. So wait a few minutes for all of this to be completed, especially the first time. So now this is currently doing the deployment and we can wait for the deployment to be completed. Once it is, we can access our project console and our hosting URL. So we're going to have our web app deployed and hosted on Firebase. Okay, currently we had a successful create operation. That is good news. So we successfully created that function, which we had just one. We can actually access the function URL if we go to this link that's prompted for us. So here I'm going to that link. And look at this. I see the message, hello from Firebase. So if I visit the link to 
US Central, the location of my database, followed by my project ID, followed by .cloudfunctions.net because we're now using Cloud Functions. Then we go to the function name, Hello World. We see our response, Hello from Firebase. So that is exactly the response that we expected. So what this function is doing is when there's a request to visit this Hello World function, when I go to that URL for that function, I get this response, Hello from Firebase. Then the CLI cleaned up the build files, finalized the version, and released the new version and completed the release. Then we got the message deployment complete. So now we can visit our project console and our hosting URL. Let's start with the hosting URL. The hosting URL is our project ID followed by .web.app. So we can go to that location in our browser and look at this. We have some success message. We have welcome Firebase hosting setup complete. You're seeing this because you've successfully set up Firebase hosting. You can open hosting documentation and you can also see Firebase SDK loaded with several different features. So here we can read documentation about Firebase hosting where we can read more and get more information about what we can do. Okay, so where does this come from? Well, this web page actually comes from index.html. If you go to your project folder and then go to index.html, then you can actually see the content from the page. So it's public index.html. You can see welcome Firebase hosting setup complete. You're seeing this because you successfully set up Firebase hosting and you can open hosting documentation. And this is showing us that our index.html file is actually being hosted on this website via Firebase. So anyone who goes to this website, they can check out the Firebase hosting that's been set up. Awesome. Okay, then in our terminal, we also had the project console. So we can copy that and we can visit the project console in our browser. Just make sure that you have the correct Google account selected. It has to be the Google account that owns the project. Then you can see all your projects or add a project. Currently we're at my home project. We're at the project overview. We can visit project settings, users and permiss permissions and usage and billing. For build, we can go to authentication as one example of what we can do. We can authenticate and manage users from a variety of providers without server-side code. We also have the Firestore database. So here we can use Cloud Firestore for real-time updates, powerful queries, and automatic scaling. As well, let's go into the real-time database. So this is what we actually set up to store and sync our data in real time. We also have storage where we can store and retrieve user generated files like images, audio and video without server side code. We also have hosting. So our website is actually already being hosted because we can visit it on this website. We can also see usage for the hosting. So we can see how much storage and downloads are being used. We also have functions that we have deployed. So we can see our hello world function. We have a trigger for the request at this specific link, the region, the runtime, the memory, and timeout. We can see the health of functions, where we see error messages. We can also see logs. So let's give a minute for logs to load. And you can actually see your log for hello world. We can see that hello world function execution started. We see hello logs and function execution took 700 milliseconds. So if you go to index.js, you can actually see hello logs is what we wanted to log out in our code. So that's why we see hello logs because it's going to log that message into our Firebase console. So that's why we see hello logs right there. So you can actually log messages to yourself. We can also check out the usage. So we have billable metrics. In our case, we have two invocations. This is the total function invocations. We can see exactly when the invocations happened. 
and we can view in usage and billing as well. Then we have machine learning, another option for your project. You can integrate machine learning into the project. You can go to your dashboard, real-time database, as well as events, conversions, audiences, custom definitions, latest releases, and debug view. So let me zoom in here. Okay, so we already checked out all of these. We can release and monitor. We can see crash analytics for the project. So this is a powerful and lightweight crash reporting solution. We have performance to get insights into your app's performance and latencies that users are experiencing. We have a test lab where we can run tests on apps and games across Google devices. So we can check out different devices. We have app distribution. We can distribute pre-release versions of our apps to testers. Then we have our analytics where we can enable Google Analytics if we want to actually click on any of these. So if you want to enable analytics, you can measure how your users are engaging with the app. You also have an engage tab where you can visit predictions to use your project's analytics events data to predict how users will behave. Apparently it will, will be removed from Firebase around Feb 18th and there's going to be a remote config personalization as a replacement. To start with predictions, first you must enable Google Analytics. You can also do A-B testing to run experiments on A-B flows, so different flows that your users might go through in your app. You have cloud messaging to send notifications to drive user engagement. You can enable in-app messaging to manage message campaigns and send messages to engage users. Remote configuration to customize and experiment with app behavior using server-side configuration. You have dynamic links, which allow you to send users to the right place in the app. You also have AdMob, which allows you to earn more from ads by enabling ads. And you also have extensions. So there's a lot that you can do with your project. Now our project has been successfully deployed and we've been able to also inspect some of the functions or well, we just had one function that we deployed. So our website has been deployed and is being hosted by Firebase and our functions were also deployed and we can access or request content from our functions. In this case, we're requesting from the hello world function and we get a response, hello from Firebase. So this is all a good sign. This tells me we've been able to deploy the website to Firebase with the Firebase CLI. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.